and amen. It's good to see all of you here this morning. What blessing it is to come together as God's family, and I'm so appreciative for each one of you. I want to say thank you to uh, Diana and Dallas and Julie and JT and our choir, our praise team folks, folks upstairs who help us uh, sound a whole lot better. And uh, for each one of you that care for Brother Phil and and uh, Brother Jake as they uh, share with us each and every week. I also just want to say uh, thank you to uh, Emily and Jake for yesterday. They did a great job with the Merry Christmas kickoff, and uh, I hope if you were here, I know you enjoyed it, and uh, tell them thank you for the work they put in to do that. And I also appreciate Ann Strickland and Fage and Rhett. They did a great job uh, decorating our sanctuary for Christmas, and I am so grateful to each one of them. I walked the poinsettia trail this morning to get up here on the stage, as, uh, and it's they're, they're a beautiful plant and beautiful uh, place for us to be able to worship God together. Last week, we started a new series of messages about the Psalms of the Messiah, and in the Old Testament, and especially in the Psalms, we see a uh, presentation of uh, God's great gift for us and to us in his son Jesus. And last week we uh, looked at uh, Psalm number 2 and today we're in Psalm 8 in your Bible. So I invite you to uh, find that. You remember Psalms right in the center of your Bible in uh, the Old Testament. And Psalm 8, there are nine verses and we're going to look at all nine verses throughout the time this morning, and we're going to read verses 3 and 4 together. Last week, I reminded you through the Bible. From the Genesis down all the way through the Revelation, you see the gift of the Messiah, Christ, to each one of us who would claim him and believe. He's in creation with the Father God in the very beginning. He is uh, with uh, Abram as he is walking on a journey from uh, where he uh, grew up to a place that he had never seen before, but by faith he walked that journey with God, and Jesus showed up as a messenger unto Abram uh, in that journey. We see Jesus standing as the fourth man in the fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, in Babylon. We see the amazing uh, uh, Messiah coming for us all the way through because Jesus has uh, has and always will exist. He didn't just show up in the manger 2,000 years ago. Christ is for all of us. And Psalm 8 reminds us of the majesty of God through sending his son into the world and that God would even consider us as men and women, human beings, as frail as we are, as unworthy as we are, but yet God loves us. He made us, He designed us, and He cares for us even, even when we make the wrong choices and choose ourselves and sin over Him. God gives, and God still wants us to be a part of His family. We're going to read this scripture together, Psalm 8, verses 3 and 4. You'll see it up on the screens behind me. It's also printed on the sermon notes inside your worship bulletin. You can follow along there as well. If you're able, would you stand with me right now as we read God's word together? Psalm number 8, verses 3 and 4. Let's say these two verses in unison together. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you've ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? Let's pray. Father God, you know our needs today, and we are so grateful that, that the, the most wondrous thing we can ever do is come together and worship you and trust you and walk with you. So today, thank you for everybody who's here in this sanctuary. Thank you for those who are watching online today. Thank you for all the opportunity you give us to be in your presence. And, O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic and awesome and beautiful and wonderful are you in all your earth. And we pray now as we 
dig into this scripture as we look more closely at what it says that we'll take each part that you give us and we'll claim it as our own. We'll recognize you are the mighty God who saves us and loves us and the one who sustains us until Christ comes again. Bless this time. And Lord, please look past the unworthy of your messenger and speak your message, we pray. Jesus' holy name and all God's people said, Amen. Please be seated. As I said a few moments ago, Jesus is in all of the Bible, every single part. And we'll never uh, recognize how to interpret the New Testament unless we understand the Old Testament. And we need to understand what God has uh, has always been doing from the very, very start. I remember being in children's choir growing up in my home church. And we would get certain songs ready to sing in a choir festival every year. And we would go to uh, the George Baptist Assembly in Tacoa, And we would uh, sing with other uh, kids' choirs from all over the state. And we would really enjoy that time. But one of the songs that we learned, I remember, was how excellent is your name in all the earth. And and we, we, it was a very contemporary song for the day and we tried to learn that the best that we could to sing it and sing it from memory and sing it uh, in the uh, the most uh, uh, majestic way that we possibly could before the Lord and I, and I still remember after all of those years I still remember the power that are in these words how excellent Lord is your name in all the, the earth and it is about the name of God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Acts 4 verse 12 the Bible tells us in the New Testament that there's no other name given to us under heaven in which we must be saved except the name of Jesus. There we <coughs> read in Philippians 2 that every knee shall bow at what the name of Jesus. And so Jesus our Messiah, uh, the anointed one of God, the one that is proclaimed in the New Testament is also proclaimed here in the Old Testament in Psalm number 8. And we read it in verse 4, What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? You know that term son of man, that is Jesus' name for himself. He called himself all the way through the Gospels the son of man. And so we get the inkling here, even though the psalmist David is speaking about how God would come here for us and visit us he did in the son of man jesus our savior the lord christ and so as he comes for us we see the majesty of who he is the blessing of who he is although what did jesus do he limited himself and came in the form of a man the bible says he poured himself out in the form of a servant and the servant jesus came here for us, although he has always existed, he is, he is the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, Trinity of God, yet he came and limited himself to walk among us. Why? Well, the Bible's really clear about that, because God loves us. God so loved the world that he did what? Gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting. So everything about our God that we, who we worship today in spirit and truth is all about how much he loves us and wants to come down to us and come alongside us to be with us. God with us. The Son of Man that visit us and be with us. Let me just share a few things that I believe this psalm speaks to us about Jesus, our Messiah. The very first one is this. Our Messiah was present at creation. Our Messiah was present at creation. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. You know, I I don't know how uh, much you enjoy seeing uh, uh, 
seeing uh, things in outer space and seeing those great pictures from outer space. But it is amazing to see pictures of nebulas and stars and uh, galaxies that are beyond ours. We we very very uh, small in comparison to the vastness of the universe. In our solar system that we live within, with our sun in the center and us revolving around the sun, it is amazing, isn't it, that scientists tell us that if the axis of was tilted just a little bit more one way, we would burn up. If it was tilted just a little bit more another way, we'd freeze to death. But the axis of the earth and the way it spins around our sun is perfect. Why? Because fingers of God put it in place. And we think about the creation of the Lord and the power of the Lord, and we read the Genesis account of how God spoke all of the universe into existence. And then we also read the New Testament. We read the New Testament in John chapter 1, that uh, great gospel that the beloved disciple John wrote for us. And in John chapter 1, what does the Bible tell us in those few ver- verses? In, begin- in the beginning was the Word. And what is the Word? It's Jesus, our Messiah, our Christ. The Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. There's another great passage that the Apostle Paul pens in Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. For by Him all things were created that are in heaven. Look at about Jesus. You read verse 15 in this passage, and it's all about what Christ has done for us, the coming, the, the Messiah that's come for us. And so it, whether they're visible or invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist or are held together. <clears throat> so when we think about the power of God for us and that he through his son, the Messiah, coming for us, reminds us of how much he loves us. He's the creator of all the universe, but he loves you, and he loves me, and he loves all of us because we're all a part of what? His creation. Now, <clears throat> we should never walk around puffed up as if we are so special that uh, we uh, lose our perspective every day, but you know, you are special. And I am a special created being. I love all the animals in the world. But you know what? There are no animals that are like us. No animals that have a soul. No animals that have a spirit that are go- it's going to go to be with the Lord. We are God's crowning creation. Not to be puffed up or... Look at me, I'm a creation of God. But understand something, we're called God's special treasure. We're called, he, he knew us before we were even formed in our mother's bodies. He created us and he created all of us individually, uniquely, personally. And so we need to look upon our lives as special gifts God because he made us in that special and powerful way he loves us with an everlasting love Jesus is present at creation and he is <coughs> desiring to be present in all of our lives but we get the opportunity to do one thing right to choose will we choose to receive the Messiah will we choose to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord and Master? will we choose and say Yes, Father, I want you to be a part of my life every single day. You see, it's the wonder of Jesus, the wonder of who he is, the wonder of how he loves, the wonder of all of his creation, and that he would care about us and create us so uniquely and individually and then hold everything together in the palm of his hand. 
the power of God, the wonder of Jesus in all of creation. But then we also see our Messiah has not only present in creation, but our Messiah has visited us. Here, the psalmist David talks about the visit that, that God, why would you in all of your majesty and all of your excellence come and visit us? The Son of Man to come and be a part of our lives. Well, see it in reference here, but we also see it in Daniel uh, chapter 7, verse number 14. So in Daniel 7, first, uh, verses 13 and 14, he had a vision. And this vision was all about the coming of the Son of Man. I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven, and he came to the Ancient of Days, the Father God. And they brought him near before him, and then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom and all peoples and nations and languages should serve it. You see, Messiah has come for us, the Son of Man, and just like we said a few moments ago, our heart and our desire is to see the nations worshipped. We're, we're so desiring to see Him worship who? The one true God and the power of His Messiah Son, the Lord Jesus, and the wonder of Jesus. You know, those of us who are believers, we have the wonder of Christ Jesus in our heart. And we, uh, I, every day, I, I, there's a part, a place in my day that I'm thinking, God, why do you love me? Why do you care about me? Why would you go through all of this for me? And it's a God-ordained love that's almost beyond our comprehension that someone would care for us that much. But he cared so much, God did, that he sent his son into the world. And this vision of God the Father caring so much for us that he would send his son to dwell here on the planet with us, to live in our filthiness. And I'm not talking about how dirty we get. I'm talking about the filthiness inside of us to live with us in our sin. Do you, can you, uh, we, we can't even imagine what it must be like for the Messiah, the Savior of all the world, God himself, to live among the sin of the world. Can you imagine how Christ must have felt when he looked upon Jerusalem and looked out over it and he saw how pitiful people were they were like sheep without a shepherd right don't you think we live in a time where you can look out upon the world and see people that are like sheep without a shepherd absolutely every day you think of the heart of god that he would care what christ jesus that he would care for me and care for you and then he lets us know throughout the bible his word how much he loves us and he lets us know how much he cares about each situation in our lives and he lets us know and we celebrate the the advent the coming of christ every single year we celebrate christmas time but again i'll point you back to the fact we're not here to celebrate with the stuff we give and the stuff we get we're here to celebrate that god would look upon us and say that is a pitiful people but that's my people that's a pitiful people in their sin but i love them so much that i'm going to reconcile them to myself and make them a part of my family how long forever everlasting to everlasting he is god and from everlasting to everlasting we'll be a part of his family if we're christian believers but we make that choice we choose to recognize the Messiah has visited us. Last thing I want to point out to you, the desire of God for us is that God would be with us, Emmanuel, just as Jesus is named in the Old and New Testament. But the last thing is our Messiah is crowned with 
honor and great glory and all of his universe from what he does. You, just looking up into the night sky, you ought to be in awe of the fact that our God created us, put us in the perfect place, in the perfect part of the solar system, not just to survive but to thrive. And then that he and all of his uh, majesty and glory and power ought to be worshipped every single day in awe as we as we look at awe of, of who he is. It says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth who set your glory above the heavens out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have ordained strength because of your enemy that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained. What is man that you're mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him. For you have made him a little lower. My translation says the angels. The real translation in the Hebrew text says Elohim. Which means God. So we've been made a little lower than God. And he's crowned us with glory and honor. As he crowns the son of and his son with greater glory and honor. So the son of man is crowned with glory and honor, and he has made all of us a little lower than himself, but the son of God, Messiah Christ, has come for each one of us, and he is crowned with great great, uh, glory and honor, and you've made him to have dominion over all the works of your hands. Now, David is talking about men and women and how we have been given an opportunity and a responsibility and a stewardship over the world God's created for us. But he's reminding us that his son, the Lord Jesus, the Messiah God, is the one who is going to come and has come for us, visited us, and has given us a picture, a glimpse into the glory and honor and power we'll be giving our Lord Jesus forever. Think about, you've made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You've put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Again, the name of the Lord. The power in the name of the Lord. The wonder in the power of the Lord of Jesus Christ, our Messiah. The Bible reminds us, as we've studied a lot over the last uh, six to seven weeks, in Matthew 24, verse 30, that when Christ comes again for all to see what's going to happen, the Scripture reminds us, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And we've seen this verse several times over the last several weeks. All the tribes of the earth will mourn because they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. You see, we need to learn how today to worship our Lord forever. And the way we learn how to worship our Lord today is we give him all glory and honor and we we recognize that everything we do in life we attribute to him. He gifts us. He blesses us. He empowers us. He encourages us. He saves us. Everything about our lives should be about giving glory and honor and praise to the Lord Jesus because that's our goal and mission forever. We learn how to do it here, and we celebrate with Christ and his power and glory forever. And as we learn, I I don't know about you, I was... uh, I had to make a couple of long trips this week. And I found myself, the only way I can deal with Atlanta traffic, the only thing I, the only way I can deal with almost any kind of traffic these days is I need to have one of my worship CDs uh, in a car play. I've, I've still got a car with a player. How about that? So I'm listening to uh, one of my praise and worship CDs that I, I truly love and As I'm listening, I find myself not just embracing, but it just engulfing me. 
and I don't care who sees me and I don't care who hears me, I'm singing to the top of my lungs in that in that car. And, and, and uh, you know, I know God helps me avoid accidents that way. I know he does. But in, in it, while I was singing this week and was in the middle of worship this week, the only thing I could do, because, listen, this happens to everybody, and I know it does. Every so often, you've got these little doubts that creep in. You know, it's, what's, what's Jesus really doing in my life? And is the Bible, everything about it, is it just absolutely true? Is it absolutely uh, infallible? Is it, you know, I, we, we have these little things. Why? Because we're human. The only thing I could, I could think of in the midst of my worship was to tell God, Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. You are the majestic God, the mighty God, the empowering God, the encouraging God, and the God who saved my soul. And I believe forever and ever. Amen. The Bible says in Hebrews Chapter 4, verse 16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Jesus is here for all of our needs. The wonder of Jesus, the wonder of the Messiah King, the wonder of the one who came to save us and to love us, the one, the one who wants to come alongside us, God with us, forever starting now and forever you may have made that decision to follow christ long ago or you may still be grappling with that choice that decision do i need to trust god fully let me tell you how excellent how majestic is the name forever and just like we said a few moments ago in acts 4 verse 12 there's no other name given unto men and women under heaven by which we must be saved, except the name of Jesus. And the wonder of Jesus needs to be in your life. Jesus should be through in all of every part of our life every day. There's a nebula out in the vast universe called the Eye of God. And the Hubble telescope picks it up, and we have a beautiful representation of it up on the screen. It reminds us of something. God knows us. He created us. He loves us. He's made the way for us. In all of his majesty, in all of his glory, in all that he is, will you trust him today? Will you trust him with your life? Will you look to him and shout to the heavens as you see the beauty and majesty of what he's given and that he would visit us by sending his son for us? Would you tell him? I believe, Lord, with all my heart, I believe. Father God, thank you for loving us today. Thank you for making the way for us at all times. Thank you for caring for us so much. Even in all of our filthiness and our sin, you love us and you've proven that love by sending your son, Jesus. It's in the wonder of Jesus that we come this morning striving to understand and to walk with you and believe fully, totally in you. I pray this morning that, Father, we might embrace Psalmist David as he speaks your word about the majesty and the, the glory of your name. Not just your goodness, but your vast greatness and how much lord you want to embrace us and love us right now i pray that you'll just help us here help us make choices that are pleasing before you come to you in faith believing and trusting you fully every day for what you want to do in us thank you father for sending jesus thank you that we can have life forever with you and father i pray for even one here in this place or one listening online today who's never known for sure they would be with you forever in heaven i pray right now they would trust you that they would confess with their mouth the lord jesus believe in their hearts 
that you raised him from the dead for them and that they would trust you and ask forgiveness of sin and ask you to come into their life. Father, let us come to you today. As Christ has come for us, let us come to you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord may be speaking to you about.